Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video two in our SOLIDWORKS API project tracker series. Uh, we've talked about the basics of the project, what we want to do, and then we looked into this SOLIDWORKS API help a little bit. Now, we've gone through, we figured out that we can access custom property information by using the iConfiguration interface, or we can use the iModelDoc extension interface. Now we've chosen to go with the iModelDoc extension method because it's a little bit simpler and it'll be a little bit more straightforward based on the example that we saw in the last video. So in this video, we need to start making some declarations and we need to start figuring out how to access exactly what we want and what the nomenclature is gonna look like. So back in our program, we need to start making a few more declarations. So we already know that we have our SW app as sldworks.sldworks and we have SW model as sldworks.modeldoc extension. Now we know from looking at previous examples that we don't need access to modeldoc extension. We can simply use our SW model dot extension dot whatever we want to do. So that gives us quick access without having to make a new declaration. So now we want to have access to the custom property manager. And this is going to be sldworks.custom property manager. Pretty straightforward. That gives us access to the custom property. Now we also need to make some declarations because we have some return values that we need to work with. Now, if we're looking through the Visual Basic Usage section, they have iCustom Property Manager, which we've just created our custom prop MGR as sldworks.custom property manager. So we now have access to this. Then they're using field name, used cache, value out, resolved, value out, was resolved, and value. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's a little cumbersome to, to look at, but let's go down into our example. So inside of our example, they have access to custom property manager. Now, if you'll notice, this example brought us to the iConfiguration interface as well. So it's a little bit different, but we know that we're using this get5. So we need to have access to our custom property manager and they're using config. In our case, we're not gonna be using configuration specific. We're gonna be using the iModelDoc extension, which is gonna be a little bit cleaner to start with but we have a return value for custom prop manager dot get five. Now that get five is what we were just looking at. It's looking for their custom property called a date. And then there's a little bit more information going on in here. If we go back to get five, you'll see that the field name is the name of the custom property. The used cache true if configuration has been activated, false if not, value out, value of custom property, resolved value out, evaluated value of the custom property, was resolved, true if the value was evaluated, false if not, and then there's a return value. Result code as defined in SW custom info get result in this enumeration here. So we can see that we have cached value, not present, and resolved value. So what does all this mean? How do we need to use this information? What kinds of things do we need? Well, we know that they declared a lot of variables here and that we're going to ultimately have to declare some variables. We don't necessarily need all of them though. Well, let's go back into our program. Let's start typing and see where that gets us. All right. So we know we're going to have to make some more declarations, but I want to start setting a few things in my main before I get too far ahead of myself. So I need to set SW model as equal to my active document. So this is going to be our swapp.activedoc. Now you'll notice that I simply just hit tab and it picked up activate doc. So we want to make sure that we are grabbing the same thing and we need this active doc property. All right, so now that we have the active doc, we can go ahead and access the custom property. Rather than hopping back and forth between the API help because I am only dealing with one monitor here, I'm just going to go ahead and type a few things in. Now we need to set our custom property MGR, just like we're setting SW model and SW app. We want to set custom property manager and we're going to set this equal to our SW model, which is our current active document dot extension, because we don't want to declare another variable to get access to that model doc extension dot custom property manager. Now you see this already comes up and what we want to do is put a parentheses and an empty string. 
Now from the SolidWorks API help file, this gets the custom property information from the current active configuration. We could also enter a configuration in here, such as default, or if you had one called order one or whatever the case is, and that's how you would get access to the custom property information that is configuration specific. In our case, we're just going to be dealing with one configuration and whichever one's active because the custom properties are not configuration specific in our instance for project number and project name. Okay, so now that we've set custom property manager equal to the custom properties in our current active document, where do we go from here? Well, this is now where we have our get five access. So back in the help file, this is where we're going to use get five. We have access to custom properties and we've set them equal to the current active documents, active configurations, custom properties, which in our case are model specific, not configuration specific. So now we need something that looks like this value equals instance dot get five and then field name used cache value out resolve value out was resolved. But what do we want to put in here? What information do we actually need? So again, we come down here parameters. The field name is the name of the custom property. Well, we have a return value here. Now the return value is going to be important because we want to know whether or not the custom property actually exists. This is going to be important when we need to tell SOLIDWORKS that we need to add a custom property. Now, right now, we don't really have to fool with that. We don't have to have a return value, so I'm going to omit it for now. But just make a mental note that we are going to come back and we are going to use a return value because it's going to be very important if that return value equals one and we need to add a custom property to this file. But for right now, we're not worried about the return value. We're just worried about all the information that's in here. So the field name is going to be either project name or project number. True of the configuration has been activated. So this used cache may or may not really be very useful to us. Value out. Value of the custom property. This is extremely important. We're going to need a variable that we declare that is going to hold whatever the custom property is. And then this resolved value out evaluated the value of the custom property. Now, in our case, resolved val out and val out are going to be the same because we're really dealing with a text string. We're dealing with a number and a name of a project. If you had some sort of formula or if you were taking the custom property of mass properties or maybe even the system time or something along those lines, the resolved value out may be different than this value of the custom property because this could potentially be a formula where this will be the evaluated number or value of that formula. And then there's a was resolved here. So if we go back into our code, we can start adding this information. Now remember, we're not worried about the return value just yet, but we are going to go back and take care of that. The first one that we're going to take care of is the project number. So what we need to do is custom property MGR dot get five. Now get five is the most current one. And as we saw, get four that was in a VBA example was obsolete. So get five. Now, because we're not returning a value, we don't need to add any parentheses around here. We're going to need to start with the field name as a string. So we want in quotations project number. The next thing we want is a true or false. Now, in this case, I'm going to use true used cache as Boolean, and then we want the value out. Now, this is going to be a value. We're going to have to go back and declare it, and I'm just going to name it project number P R O J N U M. I'm going to have to go back and declare that string in just a minute. The next thing is a resolved value out. Now, again, this resolved value out isn't really going to be of any use to us in this case. So I'm going to just say resolved val out and I'm going to have to declare that as well as a string. And then this was resolved. I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to false. So I need to come back up outside of my program. I'm going to declare this so I can have access to it at any point in time. P R O J N U M as string. Now I also need to declare resolved value out. Now this is going to be a capital R. We need to make sure that we match exactly what we mean. Now this resolved value out can also be a string, but we're not going to be using that in our program. So when we handle the project number and the project name, we're going to use that same resolved val out 
and we're just going to be overwriting it when we go through another custom property and that's just because we don't need to use it anywhere so right now as this stands we have our application.sld works we have our active document and then we have this custom property manager which is now accessing the project number custom property and it's populating that it's putting that into this PROJ NUM value all right, so the next thing I want to do is output a message to the user. So MSG box, and I'm going to output project number. So what this should do is it should output the value of project number. So I'm going to save this, and let's go ahead and run it. So right now, it's outputting this message box, project number 728543. If we go back to our SOLIDWORKS file and take a look at our custom properties, 728543. Now right here, this is going to be the value that it's pulling. It's pulling 728543 right here. And as I mentioned, this evaluated in terms of VBA, resolved val out. This is the value that we could populate as well. So it's very easy. We can go back into the code and we can change where that is. So instead of resolved val out, we could put our project number here and we could change this to resolved val out and use that as well so if we run through this it gives us the exact same thing the only difference is it's pulling from a different area it's pulling from here as opposed to here so again for dealing with a project name or a project number it really isn't going to make any difference for us because that resolved value is going to be the project number or the project name we're not going to have any different values in those boxes in your cases, it may be that you need that resolve val out. It may be that you don't necessarily need this one. So keep that in mind. But now that we have this little bit of code, let's go ahead and just try it again. Custom prop MGR dot get five. I'm just going to type it in here. And we want to get project name. Now, what you type in here is very important. If you have a capital or lowercase or you have an extra letter or, you know, whatever the case might be, it will not work. Now, in this case, I'm going to have to declare a new variable, project name, but I'm going to use the resolved val out right here. And again, this is going to be false. All right. So up top, I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to make a dim proj name as string. And then we can come back down in our program and I'm going to do project name. I'm going to use and I'm going to add some spaces in here and project name save it and let's run through this program all right resolve val out you know you'll notice I made a typo uh, there's an e at the end of that so what I need to do is make sure that my nomenclature is right before I run my program so now it's outputting the project number a couple spaces and the project name which is MLC in this case so now we know that everything is working properly and as you can see there's not really much code here. We haven't had to write much, but we had to do a lot of decoding, looking through the SOLIDWORKS API help file, examples, figuring out exactly what we need. If we go back to the help file and we look at their example and we see all their code, it would be very easy for you to just copy this, put it in your code, run it, and then start deleting things and figuring out what you want. But we really only needed this line of code here and this line of code here in order to get what we needed out of our file. So we didn't have to go through all of the trouble of doing all this extra information. But now that we've tackled the first hurdle, we need to also look at how we can add a custom property if they're omitted. So again, this is another, another step in the process and how we're gonna be building this program and the code and how everything's gonna work here without user forms just now. We wanna keep those out of the equation for now, but if you guys have any questions on what we handled there, I try to expand on it as much as possible without spending too much time on it. But again, based on whatever your level of comfort is with SOLIDWORKS API, this may or may not make very much sense to you. So if you have questions, please let us know. We'll try to help as much as we can. Just email SOLIDWORKS support at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.